Hello and welcome to this Action for Global Health charity episode for UK Health Radio, led by Compassion UK and Ireland. I'm Jane. I'm originally from India, but now I live in the UK. When I was a child, I was sponsored by Compassion, and it changed my life. I now work in the NHS as a general manager for women's and children's service. But I love talking about Compassion and sharing more about the amazing work it does in releasing children from poverty. Today, I'll be exploring the topic of maternal newborn child health and how the first 1000 days of life from conception to age 2 are critical for ensuring children begin their lives well. According to research undertaken by UNICEF, at least 200 million children living in the least developed countries fail to meet their potential because of poor nutrition and limited access to right medical care. Between conception and age two, the brain demonstrates remarkable plasticity with rapid neurological development and is extremely vulnerable to nutritional deficiencies. There is growing evidence to suggest that pre- and postnatal nutritional deficiencies lead to long-term neurological complications in adulthood. In low-income countries, mothers living in remote and rural locations are unable to access support from trained midwives, essential vaccinations, or nutritional advice. In response to these challenges, Compassion is working to strengthen those health systems and provide mothers registered within the Child Survival Program every opportunity to access the support they need for themselves and their children. Today, I have the exciting opportunity to hear from different people involved with this crucial work and hear their experiences of leading Compassion's child survival work in Togo. First, I speak with Compassion's child survival program specialist, Kate Naliaka. Kate has worked for Compassion since the year 2000. She's currently in the completion stage of her PhD, focusing on youth mentoring. Welcome, Kate, and thank you for agreeing to talk with us. Thank you so much for having me. It's indeed a pleasure and I'm deeply honored to have this opportunity. Kate, it's so great to be speaking with you today. Could you share with us, you know, how do you see um, poverty impacting the health of mothers and babies you work with? Poverty is multidimensional, um, touches very many spheres, and poverty is also intergenerational, meaning that if one mother is is poor and um, you know, does not get out of the cycle of poverty, she is likely to transmit this, um, to transmit poverty intergenerationally from her generation to her child and her children's, her children's children. But even as I talk about how poverty impacts the mother, um, I think it would be great to just uh, focus also on the first 1000 days. Now, the first 1000 days is really the, the the time from the child from the child when the child is conceived right up to the age of two years. This is a critical time to intervene because this is when the brain development, you know, there's brain development and it's very aggressive. There's body physical uh, development, but there's also development of the immune system so that the child can significantly be able to fight um, off diseases if exposed. Uh, two disease at that time. Um, then, so during pregnancy, the health of the mother is very, very important. And what we try to do is because we are working in, in, in poor communities, we know that um, there is extreme vulnerability for mothers who are in poor communities. One, because they are not properly nourished. They can access food. And even if they do access food, it's not quality food. Um, meeting the, the food groups, uh, you know, adequate proteins, adequate carbohydrates, vitamins, and minerals to be able to ensure that she is healthy um, so that the baby developing in her in utero also grows healthy. So what happens um, is that when, um, when they, you know, when a mother is exposed uh, to poverty, then she cannot access basic things like maternal care. 
And maternal care is prenatal, when she is pregnant, and postnatal, after delivery. Prenatal because the healthcare provider is constantly following up to see how is the baby developing in utero. How, you know, how is her hemoglobin, uh, hemoglobin levels? Is she anemic? And if she is, then she gets the uh, anem- um, she gets anemia, anemia um, ion supplements and foliate supplements to ensure that she is building her blood reserves. After delivery or during delivery, we want to ensure that she is in a safe place where she is not exposed to a hygiene condition that can impact the delivery process. So we insist that the mother has. Um, is attended by a skilled birth attendant. Uh, So in cases where it's very rural, sometimes it's so far for her to access access a hospital. But in the the budget, there's provision for that um, transport to be able to take her to hospital when when she's ready for delivery. With poverty or in poverty, she cannot be able to access that. At most, she may deliver in the village, in the local village, and the person I, uh, attending to her would be a traditional birth attendant. Not all of them are trained. And in case there is, she's in crisis, maybe there is heavy bleeding, maybe the child is in breach, that person is not skilled enough to be able to facilitate a safe delivery. So a skilled birth attendant is really, really critical, and that would be given by access to good medical medical care. Then there's the issue of um, the fact that uh, if she's poor, she may not uh, uh, access, uh, you know, she may not access quality food. We provide food baskets during, during, during the time that she's prenatal up to the time that she's postnatal until the child is actually five. So the child, the, the, the family has access to Food, um, food, uh, food baskets that will supplement what the family has, so that the the mother is eating nutritionally uh, pr- uh, uh, prepared foods, and even when the child is born, that the child has access to a good balanced diet that will promote a g- healthy growth and development. Wow! So I think you created a very itself, strong picture, isn't it, Kate? That uh, you know, yeah. poverty creates lack of basic provisions that a mom and and a baby should have uh, to have a healthy start for the baby and a healthy pregnancy and delivery for for the mom. And that's the injustice of poverty, isn't it? It takes away those provisions uh, from the moms and babies. Very true. Um, we see that those who experience severe poverty, you know, now UN categorizes extreme poverty as people who live on less than $2.15 a day. Um, And these people, they experience some of the hardest health challenges and struggles to access healthcare. Would you describe for us how you see these health challenges play out for mothers and babies uh, you see in your compassion programs? So, well, a family that uh, lives on, um, you know, $2.5 a day in, in our context, some of them live um, with even less, even a dollar a day, um, or even less, because it's we work in areas of extreme poverty, and um, our survival programs are really targeted to that cadre um, of that cadre of population. So you know the ch- the hardest challenges and and things that um, mothers who have been denied access to healthcare, um, you know, basic uh, hygiene and sanitation, food, human dignity. You know, those those challenges impact um, impact the development, the growth and development of the children uh, that they have in their family. And the hardest challenge, uh, when you talk about the hardest health challenge, is just you know basic access to a healthcare system where a mother can de- can deliver in a hospital you know um so if you're working in a rural area you know i've i've, I've visited some of our, the areas in which we work in deep deep rural rural areas where the 
nearest health facility is kilometers away from the village. So a hard challenge for that mother would be how does she, how is she able to get to the hospital to deliver her, her baby in a safe manner? How is she able to access a, um, a professional birth attendant so that that birth process is well catered for? So the hard, hardest health challenge is access to just a facility where a mother can give birth. The other is access to medication, where a mother, if she's sick, can she be able to access medical intervention in a timely manner and intervention that is quality, that provides and improves her quality of life. In certain areas, uh, there's a shortage. You have clinics there built by the government, but there is no medication. So there are so many challenges. And when you have an, a healthcare system that is broken, um, like what we see in many of the development countries, access is a critical factor, not only this, but the quality of that healthcare. Um, do we have a, a trained uh, midwives, trained health personnel to, get, to, to provide the care? So in compassion programs, you know, the program, the survival program, the early childhood program seeks to ensure that all these challenges are minimized. If we make the right investments as we do, compassion has chosen to make um, investments in child survival, a survival and early childhood. Why? Because we understand the importance of starting early. If we don't mm. start early, we don't reduce the burden poverty and we don't allow or enable these children exploit their full potential their god-given potential uh, in them so we remove those barriers so that mothers can access health care that benefits them and also benefits the family and what benefits the family benefits the community what benefits the community the society and the country at large Absolutely. I think, Kate, you've given us a very powerful picture for our listeners to just kind of understand the different layers of challenges that uh, the health challenges a mom would face. I mean, uh, you were talking about uh, even not having the opportunity to be able to give birth in a safe environment, you know, and that might unfortunately lead to fatality you know, fatality for women and, and babies, you know, preventable fatalities. Um, so it, it's so complex. Poverty is complex, yet how ac- lack of clean water, how that affects the growth of a child. It's just uh, it's just quite big to get our head around to, to understand the complexity uh, of the challenges. Uh, you know, you've touched a little bit on what compassion is doing. We're going to go a bit deeper into that, uh, but just wanted to you know, take your views on there is a research around the importance of first thousand days in a baby's life uh, and the lack of proper health care and support for mom and babies means, you know, there's lots of challenges in terms of baby's development, which, as you were saying, uh, already there's, there's the early start in their life is on a back foot. Do you, do you see that a lot in the moms and babies you work with uh, in your projects? Yes, absolutely. That's a good question. Um, and maybe allow me just to define what the first are, uh, a thousand days is so that uh, our viewers can understand. The first 1,000 days uh, of a child's life is very critical. Um, and it really starts from the moment that baby is conceived until they reach the age of two years, which is about 24 months. That is a period when rapid growth takes place. There is um, rapid growth within their brain. Uh, there is the building of the physical body, but also immune systems that will be that are critical for this baby as they grow uh, later into adulthood. There is, um, uh, in, you know, it's really important because that is the time when the child is most vulnerable. So, if we look at the first one thousand days, that becomes the foundation of their lifelong health. And that is when we need to invest. So, and that is why we are investing as compassion in those one, the first 1,000 days. It's a time of tremendous potential, meaning that if things go well and we set up the mother well for success, 
then we are, the science also tells us that the, the, the likelihood of getting a child who not only survives and thrives is very, is very high. However, it's also, as I said, an enormous vulnerability, such that if the mother is poorly nourished in terms of access to food and proper nutrition during that time, it impacts, it has profound impact on the way the baby grows, um, how the baby um, will learn in the future, and how the baby is going to thrive, even as an, an individual in their country. So we are lucky that um, our programs are very evidence-based now, and we are leaning on research, um, biology is telling us, what neuroscience is telling us, because they are giving us powerful insights on where these investments need to be made. Um, It talked about importance of nutrition and ensuring that that positive environment that enables her to shape the future of her child so that there are good outcomes um, for this child um, there. So the first 1,000 days is critical. Think about building a house. If you're building a house, you need to have a good foundation. And you start by ensuring you have a foundation, a good foundation. If the foundation is weak, like the Bible says, when the rains come, the foundation is, you know, the house is wrecked. When the foundation is good, then the child is able to withstand any other stress in life and will be able to move, uh, d- develop into their full potential. There is toxic stress, which is another factor. And um, by providing um, empowering opportunities for the mother, then we are able to help the mother uh, deal with the to- toxic stress and reduce that so that it does not negatively impact um, impact the baby. That's that. I mean, that is so amazing to to hear and get an understanding of what compassion is doing. Uh, I mean, often we would we think you know it's the child sponsorship. You know, once they start school, uh, that's when we are coming in. But no, we start compassion is starting so much early. Uh, and as you said, in really investing in that giving that child the best start they can have building the strong foundation even when they are in their mother's womb uh, is such an important work that you and your team is doing UK Health Radio the station that makes you feel good UK Health Radio the station that makes you feel good Welcome back to this Compassion UK episode of the Action for Global Health Charity Takeover for UK Health Radio. In this next section of today's episode, we hear from Akubi, a mother to twins, Pierre and Paul, enrolled in the Child Survival Program in Togo. This piece has been recorded with the help of a translator, as Akubi does not speak English. However, her story forms an important contribution in our understanding of the lived experience of poverty and how the child survival program has helped her to access vital care and support. The twins were born prematurely. I delivered at home and I didn't have enough milk to breastfeed them. I prayed every morning for help. I'd previously lost babies because of lack of milk. One morning, I woke up and I thought I would lose my twins again. God answered my prayers when two women came to my house and talked about a child survival project at church. I then realized that God answered my cry. When the twins are sick, the Child Survival Project supports me so I can bring them to the hospital. When I am also sick, the project provides support for my medical expenses. The Survival Project worker takes care of all the medication for the twins and me. 
There's a great change in our lives, thanks to child survival. I am so happy that the Lord brought me into the survival project. Our next contributor is Kofi Ahanan, the National Director of Compassion in Togo. I asked him to record a message explaining the impact of child survival. Kofi is the National Director in Togo since 2010 and has been instrumental in shaping the work of Compassion in Togo as well as overseeing 306 active child development projects and 110 child survival projects throughout Togo, Kofi has helped pioneer a three-year partnership between Compassion and the UK government through UK Aid, which has supported the work of 23 child survival projects in rural parts of Kara, Maritime, and Plateau region of Togo. Kofi, welcome, and thank you for agreeing to share your experience with us. Over to you. My name is Kofi Ahono. I'm the National Director for Compassion in Togo. Back in 2019, Compassion UK, along with much funding from the UK government through UK aid, raised £2.2 million to help protect women during pregnancy and ensure their babies have healthy start in life. We support mothers and their babies for the first 1,000 days of that infant life. The first 1,000 days of life from conception to age two is a critical phase during which the foundation of a child's development are led. If a child's body and brain develop well, then their life chances are improved. Poverty is a significant challenge in Togo, especially in the rural areas where our projects are based. Here, approximately 69% of the household are living below the poverty line on less than $2.15 a day. This economic vulnerability and the many hardships that come with it have severe consequences for Togolese women and children. It is a terrible reality that one in 20 babies do not reach their first birthday and that women have one in 56 chance of dying in pregnancy or childbirth in the UK. This is one of 10,000. However, in partnership with Compassion, and thanks to UK AIDS, churches in Togo are working hard to radically improve this statistic. Mothers enrolled in the Child Survival Program are being blessed by a wide range of supporting measures, including medical, dietary, employment, and child survival intervention. Medical interventions provide pre- and postnatal checkup, the presence of skilled birth attendant during labor, access to vaccinations, all of which maximize the opportunity of a healthy pregnancy and birth. Dietary intervention include breathing guidance and food supplement, which give children the best possible start with the right nutrition. And employment interventions offer advice on income generation, vocational development, and skill training, which all empower mothers to provide for their families. Finally, our child development interventions include health and hygiene workshop and access to a baby sensory room, ensuring babies get the resources they need to thrive in their first year of life. Despite the challenges posed by COVID-19, our work has not stopped, and we can praise God that the families in whole are doing well. I'm pleased to report that in the final year of Compassion's Child Survival Program, 695 babies were supported across 
23 separate child survival sites. 96% of these births were attended by a skilled birth attender. Thus, 30% above the national average. 92% of babies were at the normal birth weight. That is 8 above the national average. Of the babies currently under 6 months old, 89% are being exclusively breathed, thus compared to the national average of 57.2%. Our work has an indirect impact on the families of babies and mothers enrolled in our program. We provide food pastoral and hygiene kits and educate mothers on children's health and nutrition to help support their whole family. Through this initiative, we have been able to support over 3,250 participants indirectly. With the current global crisis, we are currently seeing more families being pushed into poverty. Pregnant women and infants are often the most at risk from the effects of malnutrition. Even before this crisis, 23.8% of the children under five suffered from chronic malnutrition, with 15.2% of these children at grave risk without intervention. These figures are sadly set to rise. In response to this urgent need, Compassion Frontline Church Partners are providing emergency food packages to families vulnerable to food insecurity. Long-term food security needs are also being considered through the distribution of seeds, fertilizer, livestock, and training on building and maintaining home garden and small-scale farms. We are now almost at the end of our final year of partnership with UK Aid, and there is much still to do. With food costs increasing because of the war in Ukraine, climate-related drought, and the impact of COVID-19, I'm aware of just what it will take to ensure that no compassion child comes to any harm. Thank you, Kofi, for that contribution. And I'm glad to hear the partnership between UK government through UK Aid and Compassion in Togo has been such a successful one, ensuring more mothers are lifted out of poverty and are able to care for their babies. Kofi's mention of food security is sadly something that has grown into an urgent need as multiple crises affect our world. As I mentioned at the beginning, the right nutrition is essential for growing babies. And both Kofi and Kate shared how food packs provided by Compassion UK are providing a lifeline to those most at risk, at risk of severe chronic malnutrition in places like Togo. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. The station that makes you feel good. Welcome back to this final section of today's Compassion UK episode of the Action for Global Health Charity Takeover for UK Health Radio. In this next section of today's episode, I speak with Compassion's Child Survival Program Specialist, Kate Naliaka. She is currently in the completion stage of her PhD, focusing on youth mentoring. Kate has worked for Compassion since the year 2000. Kate, it's so great to be speaking with you today. We are going through some unprecedented times, you know, the big worldwide factors like global food crisis, food shortages, climate change, you know, COVID pandemic. Um, It's all made this last few years really, really hard. And how had these, all these factors affected the communities and moms and babies you're working, working with? Yeah. So basically, 
basically, um, I'd, I can point to COVID. Um, the COVID situation, of course, came at a time when no country was really ready for it. But um, one of the things that we saw with COVID was a general fear because COVID was um, 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 a disease that was airborne or was a disease that um, you know, was spread either through air or contact. We saw that many of our mothers feared to go to the hospital. But um, our church partners, our, our, our frontline church partners, aggressively um, worked at educating the mothers. And so in, in instances where other, other, other organizations saw a drop in attended births, we had close to 98, 99% attended births even during that period. So wow. I, think, I think that is a, a major success because the, the the churches really went all out to ensure that in spite of COVID, mothers still accessed um, uh, um, healthcare, and they worked very hard to educate the mothers to, to, to overcome the barriers of the things that they had heard about, about COVID. Climate change is another one, which is something we are going to live with for generations unless the world uh, wakes up and begins to, to take a very, very um, uh, strategic decisions. Um, you know, access to food care, uh, I mean, uh, access to food um, in terms of uh, uh, um, uh, climate change. Uh, many countries in Africa, we, we are facing a food crisis. We've had extended uh, periods of drought in Ethiopia, in parts of Kenya, uh, Tanzania as well. Uh, in the Western part, uh, Burkina Faso and Togo as well. So we've experienced a food crisis and um, means that that exacerbates poverty, means that even when you're working so hard to release people from poverty, uh, a lack of food because of a food crisis makes families fall back into poverty. But we have strategically uh, tried to address this issue and we've ensured that um, um, especially our mothers and babies have an uh, have access to a food food baskets that can be able to make sure that they they are living comfortably. Does it meet all the needs? No, but at least there is something that a family can have because other families have had no access at all. But we Absolutely. are going we are going the extra mile to ensure that that family accesses a food basket. And and that there is um, there is also access um, um, access to um, money that they can be able to use to meet their basic their basic needs. Um, and I imagine what, you know things are costing that, much more now, uh, yes. and inflation would have reduced their purchasing power, making it further cha- more challenging for families to meet their needs. Absolutely, you are very very right. Yeah, the, um, the the currencies have dropped against the dollar, and therefore, like you rightly say, access access is has been a great a great challenge. Where families had two meals a day before, now they are ha- either having one or even none. But um, mm. uh, b- but because we are providing um, you know the food baskets, and we um, are also providing. Um, additional resources and empowering the churches to make good interventions, decisions uh, that are able to help the families. We have been able to see some form of stability um, being reflected in these families that we serve. I mean, that is, uh, that is quite mind blowing. You know, we are all experiencing the effect of inflation and, and increasing cost of living. But for some of us, we are in a less unfortunate position where a decision is whether we can have an extra treat or a dessert for our meal or not. But for some people, it's actually whether we get any meal or not, you know, so uh, although we are all feeling the effect of it, but um, the effect of inflation and climate change and cost of living rise for people living in abject poverty is so much more. Um, And we all need to do two things to 
to fight that. Uh, I mean, Kate, you very helpfully touched on some uh, things that compassion is doing. Could you elaborate that a bit more for uh, for us to understand what what compassion is doing to change the situation you know, for moms and babies through its child survival interventions? So what we are currently doing in um, the child survival program um, is one is um, like, like I just want to go back to uh, one of the ex- uh, the examples you used. If you can allow me just to talk about the definition of poverty, because that will then help me uh, be able to bring each one of the items that we are absolutely go at, for it, Kate. Uh, yeah, talking about. So, for instance, um, the lens in which we see poverty is looking at it through a holistic lens. And um, you talked about uh, powerlessness, you talked about um, exclusion, you also talked about access to food, education, sanitation, and, 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 and many other things. But I want to add on what World Bank defines poverty. Uh, poverty, they look at poverty as holistic, but they also say that poverty encompasses things like health, education, access to social services, vulner- um, vulnerability, social exclusion, and access to capital. And these are some of the things uh, at Compassion in the survival program. These are some of the things that we are building on to ensure that our approach towards uh, uh, helping mothers and babies is addressed. For instance, like I said, we provide access to healthcare. Um, Healthcare that enables a pregnant mother get antenatal uh, services and postnatal services as well. Just like you say that you and your your wife, when you you know when she was pregnant, she had access to see a doctor on a monthly basis. You know, get her blood works done, get um get nutritional counseling to ensure that she's eating a good meal and so on and so forth. So we have access. Uh, in terms of health is access. Uh, we ensure that every mother does deliver in the in 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 a hospital with a skilled birth attendant. And that's why I said while our our percentages may have been between 98 and 99, our standard is 100%. So that 100% of our mothers access healthcare and ensure that they have a skilled birth attendant uh, at delivery. Um, if there's v- vitamin supplement supplementation, iron supplementation, foliate, they have access to that. In terms of uh, management of uh, childhood diseases, even when the child is born, then she has access to that in that in that space. In terms of education, we have a female literacy program where mothers who may have dropped out of school may be like, uh, allow me to use the example of your mother, who may, may have dropped out of school or got married very young, and maybe because of pregnancy had to drop out of school. Then we work with local governments and local communities to provide um, female literacy education so that by the time the mother is transitioning out of the program, if, if there is anything she can do, she can read her Bible and she can be able to do basic um, numeracy. If she sets up a business, she can be able to know what's profit, what is loss, how do I plow back my money into the business, and so on. So in coupled with education and literacy is also financial literacy, where they are trained on how to... Um, you know, look after a business, how to start a business, how to grow the business and how to save as they work through that business. And that is very empowering. So, and then there's access to social uh, services where she comes to the church uh, on, uh, on a monthly basis and she, she, she has a group activity. She's, she is uh, exposed to group activities with mothers in her community where they learn from one another and there is peer to peer mentorship i have found peer to peer mentorship very very powerful i have stories of mothers who have become um um uh, you know who because of the training that they have gone through the survival program they have been they have learned so much that they have become um advocates and champions in their communities on what maternal 
newborn healthcare is all about. And um, when it comes to issues of capital, uh, because we teach them um, financial literacy, they have opportunities to choose and to learn what sort of um, small business can I start? It could be a cookery business. It could be um, um, a hairdressing, you know. It could be, so they, looking at their skills and their competencies, they go through a training and they can be able to say, okay, I think based on my level of education and my skills, I would be good at this. And they have somebody who journeys with them through that, that process. And they build their capacity and then they are able to set up um, small, um, small businesses. Uh, because is... we, are, we are a Christian, uh, a Christian organization, there are Bible studies just to be able to ground uh, these mothers spiritually um, in terms of the word of God and also teaching her how to pray how to lead Bible study in her own family so that we strengthen the family unit spiritually. So it's a holistic okay. approach. I was just about to say that, um, you know, what you're describing is just not one type of intervention, but a holistic intervention, you know, again, coming at it, how you could support the moms and their babies, not just for the physical need, but emotional, mental uh, em empowerment and, and spiritual need as well. Um, what, what do you think is, was the, is the most effective aspect of the interventions, of the number of interventions you've described? What is the most impactful one? For me, the most impactful is the change of mindset. Because the change of mindset changes a heart. And when a heart is changed, then this person has a different worldview um, to looking at problems, to looking at situations, and they are empowered to make the right decisions. They are empowered to be better people. So for me, one of the greatest downsides of poverty is that if it's poverty, if the pover if poverty affects the mind, then that person gets stuck in a rut and they really can't get themselves out of that situation. What I, I have could seen... Not, could not agree with you uh, more. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you, you absolutely need to hit the nail on the head. Uh, poverty so much or overcoming poverty so much is about the mental empowerment. You know, I always, uh, when I speak to people, I say, you know, when you live in poverty, it's like a frog living in a well where the injustice of poverty is, the walls of those injustices are so high. You don't expect anything different from life because you don't know anything different. And when there is no expectation or no hope for a different life, you give in. And as you say, you, you get into a rut. Uh, it absolutely is the change of mindset and the empowerment of people's mindset. Um, so yeah, that I totally concur that. And, and that's what I have felt growing up in poverty. And that's where things changed for us when we started to believe change was actually possible. You know, yes. this is not gonna be our story and my children's story and their children's story. You are listening to The Compassion Podcast. Kate, how would you say that, um, you know, the, the, the interventions vary from or do they vary from country to country that you work in, whether you see, uh, you know, is it the same across Kenya, Ghana, Togo, or do you see the interventions slightly differ across different communities? Well, like I said in the beginning, um, poverty is contextual. Poverty is contextual. Uh, what is what the way um, people in Ghana define poverty is very, very different. Uh, poverty is different in an urban setting. It is different in a slum. It is different in a rural setting. There are certain fundamental things that are similar, but uh, in general, poverty is very, very different. Um, and so, for instance, maybe what I could say is that the program, while there are certain things that will be the same across countries, there are certain things that will be different um, um, in other countries. So, yeah. And that's so that, crucial, isn't it, that you are yes. dynamic and you're able to adapt to the yes. need of that specific community? Because as you yes. say, poverty is complex. Uh, it's yes. not, not the same issues everywhere. Yes. Um, that's great. You know, um, Kate, in September 2023, the UN will host high-level meetings about universal health coverage. 
So what does universal health coverage mean to you and how would it impact uh, Compassion's interventions and, and communities you work with? So universal health, health coverage is basically the access to health services um, for health, for promotion, prevention and treatment, and also includes a degree of rehabilitation and palliative care where there is the need for such. And when they talk about universal health care, they are saying that you have access to this without risk of any financial um, hardship when paying for them, meaning that even if you have to pay, it's subsidized to a level that you can be able to pay without infringing on your other rights. Now, I think for us in the, in the developing, uh, developing world, and that is where most of um, the compassion countries are, um, you know, universal healthcare is really determined, uh, determinant by the national country's health policies and the systems that have been placed in, um, in, in, in that country. Are those if, uh, systems efficient? Do they provide access? Um, and not only access, is it quality access? Are the healthcare are the healthcare workers or providers or first line providers um, well trained? Are medicines and other technologies available? So, in in terms of um, the impact that this would have, it would be really nice if all the countries, of course, embraced universal healthcare. Each one is at its own level, and each one is at its own pace of providing that. Um, But I feel that if that were true, if that was the ideal situation, then it would impact uh, compassion's interventions uh, by ensuring that that component is taken care of. And then we would be able to focus on other interventions, uh, other holistic interventions to bring um, stability into the lives of um, the child and the family. But I do know that health is a cross-cutting issue. If you are not healthy, you cannot work. If you are not healthy, you know, you, you, you cannot access opportunities. If you are not healthy, then you are sick all the time and you may not even be able to know what is out there for you to be able to access. I feel that if universal coverage did what did uh, was um, undertaken the way it should, it would impact compassion um, interventions positively because then the, co- the churches that serve these mothers would have free access to that. And then it gives them opportunities to invest their time and their energies in other, other areas in the life of the mother and child that need resources. So it would, it would really it would really help to balance out um, access and uh, the res- resource utilization, giving the churches abilities to be able to do other things that would Absolutely. be needed in their life. Yes. Yeah. And I think uh, from my personal experience, I've also seen a, a huge part of a success of any intervention, something like universal health coverage also depends on the infrastructure of that nation and corruption. You know, what level of corruption exists in the system uh, where sometimes, you know, you have all these provisions, but it doesn't actually get to the grassroots level uh, to access it. Um, And I believe, you know, all of this needs to come together uh, for the universal health coverage to really have the effect that it potentially has. Yes. Katie, you've created such an amazing picture uh, for me and for our view, uh, listeners, you know, uh, health, health is a basic human right, you know, being able to access healthcare when you need it. But it's not just about being able to receive the medication when you're ill, but it's yeah. fundamental to a society thriving and growing and developing. Uh, so it's such a critical um, thing to have in life. Kate, thank you so much for your time today uh, and for giving us an insight into the work of compassion in Kenya and beyond. Thanks for all that you do. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you want to know more about the work of Compassion UK around the world, then please visit CompassionUK.org. Here you can find more about child survival programs. I want to thank all my guests today for their contribution. For Kate, Akubi and Kofi, 
and thank you for listening. I'm Jane, your host from Compassion UK for the Global Health Charity Takeover for UK Health Radio. Goodbye.